All right. In this video, I'm going to be doing some more linear algebra examples from Unit 5 on basis, dimension, right? Nullity theorem, Gram-Schmidt, like basis, all basis, dimension stuff, right? Okay, so I'm going to start off with the thing that, you know, might be labeled. Let me see what it is on the calendar. It's going to be another Unit 5 problem set. It might also be called linear algebra 5.3 extra practice. Uh, discussion problems for Unit 5 is what it says at the top. I don't know. Either way starts with construct a matrix with the required properties or explain why that's impossible. Okay, the first one is that 1, 2, negative 3 and 2, negative 3, 5 are in the column space. Range of matrix A. And the null space contains 1, 1, 1. So 1, 1, 1 is an element of the null space of A. All right, so the idea is I'm just going to assume this is going to be a three by three matrix just to make my life easy. And well, actually, no, it's going to have to be because if the range elements are three dimensional and the null space element is also three dimensional, that means it has to be a three by three matrix. I didn't see that before. So if I want these two things to be in the column space of A, the easiest way to do that is to just make them columns of A. So I'm going to do that. One, two, negative three. 2, negative 3, 5, and then I need to figure out what this third column is going to be. So I need to probably use this piece of information as well. And so what I want you to think about is if 1, 1, 1 is in the null space of A, then it's necessarily the case that 1, A, 1, like the first column of A, plus 1, A, 2, plus 1, A, 3 is going to equal the zero vector. That's what it means to be in the null space, right, in terms of matrix multiplication. So if this is a 1 and this is a 2, I just need to be able to add all these up to get the 0 vector. So if the, in the first component, if this is 1 plus 2 is 3, I need this to be negative 3. 2 minus 3 is negative 1, plus 1 is 0. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2 minus 2. Okay? This is the matrix that makes that happen. Okay? Um, I think that you could say that this is equal to a times 1, 0, 0. This is A times 0, 1, 0. A times this is going to be 0, 0, 0. Okay. Okay, the second one is very similar, except we're going to, instead of saying that they're in the range, we're going to say that they are in the row space. Okay. We'll, we'll do that, but I'll just copy the problem. Right, so I'm going to kind of start off with the same idea, right? I'm going to put these as rows of A instead of columns of A since they're in the row space. So 1, 2, negative 3, 2, negative 3, 5. And then I just need to figure out what is this, right? And so what I'm going to need to do is kind of take the same approach as before up above and say that, well, I would need to take one of each of the columns, add it together to get the zero vector. But that's not going to be possible, right? Because although 1 plus 2 minus 3 is equal to 0, 2 minus 3 plus 5 is not 0. Okay. So there's no way for a1 plus a2 plus a3 to equal 0, which means that 1, 1, 1 cannot be in the null space of A. That's, that's the reason why that one's impossible. All right, let me copy the next. All right, now this one's a little touchier, and I don't know that I'm looking back at what we did in class and you know how we were discussing this, and let me just make sure there's nothing I'm missing from that discussion from both classes. I'm not really seeing a whole lot here. Okay, so I really what we were doing, I feel like was making an unreasonable assumption. But if um, AX equals 1, 1, 1 has a solution, is consistent, then what that's going to mean is that 1, 1, 1 is an element of the range of A. Okay, but we're also saying here that 1, 1, 1 is also an element of the left null space, which is to say that it's in the null space of A transpose. Okay. And one thing that we do know about orthogonal spaces is that, first of all, they can't have any overlap. Okay. If they have vectors that's, if they, if they have uh, non-trivial intersections, say there's a vector in both of them and it's not zero, 
uh, then we could dot it with itself and we would not get zero and then therefore they wouldn't be orthogonal. But I also know from the fundamental theorem of linear algebra that the range and the left null space are orthogonal subspaces. Okay, so because range of A is orthogonal to null space of A transpose, that means that their intersection is just the zero vector. Range of A intersect null space of A transpose equals the set that only has the zero vector in it. And this is not the zero vector, and therefore it can't be in both. Okay, and so that's going to be my reason for why this one's impossible, because what I'd done in class, I feel like I was making assumptions about A that may not be true. Okay. I think I, I put 111 as one of the columns of A, and you don't know that that has to be the case, right? You could have some linear combination of columns getting you 111. And I'm not sure how that would. I, I, I'm sure it's somewhere in the matrix of arithmetic or the matrix algebra or whatever. I'm not entirely sure, but this is, this is a good reason right here. So let's move on. All right, number four is asking for us to get us, uh, for us to give a matrix where every row is orthogonal to every column. And this one, was, this one was pretty challenging for us when we worked it in class. Based on. I'm not sure how you were supposed to see this from the outset, but one thing that we came to realize was that if every row is orthogonal to every column, then A times A must equal the zero matrix. Okay. And if you think about it, like let's just say, you know, Whoops, I messed this up. 2, 1, A, 2, 2, A, 2, 3, and so on. And when we were to multiply it by itself, if you think about the way that matrix multiplication works, okay, so, right, I would take this row and run it against that column. And then over the course of me doing this matrix arithmetic, I would hit every row against every column to make sure. So I'm looking for a solution to A squared equals the zero matrix. Okay, so first of all, that means it's going to have to be a singular matrix. right? Think about it, because a zero matrix is made up of zero vectors. And if I have A times the first column of A, well, then that needs to give me the zero vector, which means that you know, I, need to have a, I need to have a singular matrix. And or at least one of them, I was realizing that some of them are going to be zero. So what this is called, this is called a nilpotent matrix, um, where you know you take it, to, if enough, you take enough powers of that matrix, you'll eventually get to the zero matrix. Kind of interesting. I'm just gonna show you one, uh, and I'll kind of describe how we arrived at it in class. Because when we did this problem set in class, I had never actually worked all the way through it and didn't know what the answers were. I just kind of copied it out of a book and said, these look like good problems. So this one was what we came up with right here. It's almost the zero matrix, but it's got a one off of the main diagonal. Okay. If I had a one along the main diagonal right there, what would happen is, say it was in the bottom right, when I, multi when I go to dot row three with column three, I'd end up with a one. Okay, so we, cannot, we have to have all zeros along the main diagonal. And then what we kind of also found was that if we had more than one non-zero, we were running the risk of, of coming back with, without zero dot products. And so this is one where if I take it and square it, I'm going to get the zero matrix. It's one where every row is orthogonal to every column. You can check me on it if you want. It, it's going to work. And, but this is not the type of problem I would probably assign you in, in my class because I'm just not really sure how we're supposed to come up with that besides a, a whole lot of like guess and check and teamwork and stuff like that. All right, so number five. I'm kind of realizing as I've copied this that maybe I, I didn't copy it exactly. I thought I was, I was trying to save some space. It says columns add up to a column of zeros, rows add up to a row of ones. And they did not say it had to be three by three. And the way that I ended up like convincing myself that we had the right answer was by going in the by two case. And you'll really be able to see why, it, why it's not going to work. Three by three, I believe you would come up with the same result, but it may not be like... 
it'd be a whole lot more row reduction and a whole lot more solving, you know, on that step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to kind of just set up a system, right? I've got a, B, C, D, our usual generalized two by two matrix. And if the columns add to zero, 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 then that means, or zero, zero, then that means A plus B has to equal zero and C plus D has to equal zero. But if the rows add to a row of ones, then I need A plus C equals one and B plus D also equals one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a four by four system because I've got four variables and four equations and Solve it using row reduction. All right, so 1a, 1b, 0c, 0ds. Those are both 0. And a plus c equals 1. b plus d is also equal to 1. And uh, let's see. Let's just, I guess we can get to it. I think I want to row, I'm going to just use technology and tell you that, you know, if you're working this problem, I would expect you to do the same. I mean, or you could row reduce it by hand if you needed the practice. But at this point in the course, I'm, I'm just going to use technology. All right, so we row reduce this thing and we see that there's going to be no solution. Okay, so this is impossible based on that because this has, I mean, there's no solution to that. So in the two by two case, at least there is no solution. I have not done this for the three by three or higher case, but I suspect that you would get the same result. All right, and why can, well, let's find out. I'm looking at number, or it's not number five, it's just another problem. So why can, so what we're saying is that V equals, pardon me, one, zero, negative one, transpose, it's a row, can't be both a row and in the null space. As I, I think as in the null space, they mean vertically, but no, don't worry about it too much. Um, let's see. So cannot be a row of A. while also being in the null space of A. Okay. I'm going to show you that by basically supposing that it was and showing you that that's going to bring up a contradiction. Okay, so what if it was row one? Okay. And then I went and multiplied it by one, zero, negative one. Well, Regardless of what these are, you know, like that's going to keep us from finding this and that. But we can have an entry, and we'll get 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0 plus negative 1 times negative 1 is 2. That's not 0. Okay? So it can't be in the null space because when I just did it, it didn't work. Okay? So that's why V being as a row, it can't be a row of A and a column that's in the null space. Okay? It would need to be some kind of vector that at least its components added to 0 or something like that. Okay, so that's going to be all for this set. Next, I'm going to do the unit five practice test. That's what I'm going to do. That is an old version of a late test I used to give for this unit and like kind of an older and I'd say it lower quality linear algebra course that I used to give. And so this is by no means get like a comprehensive, like this is what's going to be on the test, right? Don't, don't make that mistake. Okay, you will be surprised because we've learned much more than what you'll see on this practice test but it is still a test I gave to some people over this type of stuff at some point when I was teaching linear algebra so all right first thing is that M is a four by six matrix and that B equals vector one and vector two is a basis for the null space of A, or M. Okay. First question is, what's the nullity? Okay, well, nullity of M is the dimension of the null space. 
which is the number of vectors in the basis for the null space, which is 2. Okay, next they're going to ask for the rank of m is equal to the dimension of the range. But more importantly, like we don't really have that much information about m. We just know about the nullity, really, is all, all it shows. And so what I can say is that it's going to be the number of columns of the matrix, which is 6, minus the nullity, which is 2, which is going to be 4. How many components of the column space of M? OK, well, the column space of M is the range of M. It's all the set of possible linear combinations of the columns. And if this is a 4 by 6 matrix, I'm going to just go ahead and draw you a picture of it. One, two, three, four. I believe that's four by six. Yeah. All right. And then these columns pretty clearly have four elements in them. So the column space is equal to the range of M is a subset of R4. Lives in R4. For the same reason, the row space of M is going to be. Well, I guess I don't know what else to say, but besides the range of M transpose, but I I'd already said equals and don't see my eraser nearby. What I'll do instead is, okay, I'll say that this is, well, it's six wide. The rows are six wide, so it's a subset of R6. And that's all for the first kind of set of problems. The next one is let W be a subspace vectors and W satisfy the equations below. Okay. These problems kind of individually said that, you know, find the dimension or write a basis. I'll probably do both for these just so, you know, for the extra examples. So this is going to be number five. Let's see. W is a subspace of R5 where this is true and x2 minus x3. Plus x4 is equal to 0. Yeah, OK, cool. So I'm going to find the dimension, and I'm going to write a basis for that w. OK. First thing I want to do is solve for x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 in terms of the others. So x1 equals 4x3 plus 2x5. x2 equals x3 minus x4. And it looks like x3 can be whatever it wants, and the same for x4 and x5. So I'm going to start factoring that out. x1 is not an independent variable. The independent variables are x3, 4, and 5, okay, which means the dimension is going to be 3. Okay. But I'll show you. I'll start with the basis, and then you know, using the definition of dimension. Okay. So these vectors equal x3 times. 4, 1, 1, 0, 0, plus x4 times 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, plus x5 times 2, and then until 2, 0, 0, 0, 1. There we have it. Okay, that's the basis. Because the basis has three elements in it, or really, I guess the basis um, is equal to this set of vectors. Okay, that's my basis. The dimension is equal to three because it's got three elements in it. All right, number six. I'm going to copy the problem real quick. All right, so here we go. We've got a subspace of R6 that looks like it's going to have dimension four, I think, because there's going to be four independent variables, right? X1 and X2 are going to be dependent on Xs 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, but I'm going to take the exact same approach I did last time. So maybe if you want to practice this on your own, you should pause the video and you know work it yourself and then check your work against mine. That would be a good thing to do. So x1 equals 4x to the 4 minus x to the 5 minus x to the 6. x2 equals x3. So now I'm going to just say, OK, well, it's x3 times 
and then X3, 4, 5, and 6 can be whatever they want. So I'm not seeing it in the first one. Do see it in the second one. X3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, plus X4 times 4 and 0 from these two equations. And then I'll see it where I would normally expect to see it. And right there. Okay, I'm still in my shot. X5 times negative 1, 0, 0, 0. That's where X5 belongs plus x6 times negative 1, a bunch of zeros, and then a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, definitely. That, that, that's good. So the basis is going to be a lot to write. 0, 1, 1, 3 zeros. And Four zero zero one zero zero and okay. That was process. And because there are four elements in the basis, that means that the dimension of W is equal to 4. All right. So this one, this set of problems, we've got a whole bunch going on. It says matrix M is row equivalent to this one. So basically, I've done the row reduction for you. What can you tell me based on that? OK, what is the rank of M? OK, so that's going to be. What's the last one I did? Number six? Okay, this will be seven. Okay, the. Lost myself. Rank. Number of pivots. One, two, three. Nullity. Is number of columns minus the rank, which is one. Okay, basis for the range of M. Okay, if all I've got is the before and after, then I'm gonna have to use range trick one. Okay, the, yeah, if we wanted a basis for the row space, we could use range trick two, but man, that's not what we asked. Okay, we want a basis for the range. And so I'm gonna take these pivots from column one, column two, and column four, backtrack them to the original basis for the range of M is going to be column one, column two, and column four. OK, and what else was I going to say about this? Oh, this is, I mean, I've got another couple things to do on this. But I will say that this is the type of problem that I will very likely, I, like, I will be putting on your test. No matter when you're watching this, if you're in my linear algebra class, there's going to be something like this. Because this is a way for me to ask you to do these range tricks or you know basis tricks. It'll have one right answer. And I won't be spending the rest of my life grading your different responses that may or may not be accurate. OK, so I need to scroll down a little bit. OK, yeah, the last one is number 10 for this section. It's going to be write a basis for the null space. OK, and I'm going to just set up to do that right here. But I'll come back and do that after a little bit of work. So I'm going to go over here and start to do kind of the usual thing. If we were to augment this with 0, that would give us the solutions to the null space over here. Think about how we found the null space in general. We augmented with zeros, row reduced, and then read our answer. So we've done the row reduction. We can augment with zeros after, because we know how that's going to play out. And then we can interpret after. So x1 minus x4 equals 0. x2 plus x3 equals 0. And what? Hold on, let me make sure I copy that matrix down, right? Ah, well, row four or x four is going to be equal to zero, which means that x one is also going to be equal to zero. Okay, because I could have added this one up here and fully reduced it. This is not fully reduced to echelon form, so there's that. All right, so x two equals negative x three. Other than and x1 equals 0, x4 equals 0. So there's one 
say x3 is the, is the free variable. 0 is x1. x2 is the negative of x3. So x3 is 1. That means that needs to be negative 1. x4 is also 0. Okay. They can all be expressed as multiples of that, meaning that that vector on its own forms a basis for the null space. Uh-oh. Zero, negative one, one, zero. Okay, and all right. So yeah, that's my basis for my null space. And let's see what else we got. Let T be the oh yeah, this is a good one. Okay, I'm glad I'm doing this one on, on video for y'all. Okay, let me set up for that one. All right, so they're going to give us a, you know, uh, set. They're going to ask, is it a basis for R3? It's been a while. I mean, you know, I don't think, no, I've ever asked you this question. Now I am, okay, because this is important. So what you're going to do is you're going to investigate, is it a linear independent spanning set for R3? Because that's what a basis is. It's a linear independent spanning set. So I'm going to take, you know, matrix U, which is going to be 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, negative 1, and negative 2, 2, 2. And I'm going to row reduce it. Okay. And that's what I get. Notice I'm not going to be appealing to the name of this matrix to, for the reason why this is basis for R3. I'm not even going to say it out loud on this video, right? I know that y'all want to say because it reduces to the you know what that it's going to be a basis, but that is not a reason at all. Okay, the reason for something being a basis should have to do with the definition of basis. You all know that. You've been in my class long enough. Our reasoning needs to go back to the definitions. So what I'm going to say is that this shows that the only combination of the vectors in T that could add to 0 would be 0 of each of them. Okay, that means it's in a linear independent set. Also, if I put anything over here on the right side, any A, B, C, I could row reduce for coefficients that I could combine these to get ABC, which means that the span is all of R3. I can make this be whatever I want, because no matter what happens on the right side of the augmentation, right? say I augment it with ABC, that's only going to impact what happens over here. It's not going to impact what happens over here. And this means I've got a unique solution. So I'm going to say span of U is equal to R3 and u is linear and independent, therefore t is a basis for R3. So yes. Okay, number 12. Is it an orthogonal basis? Okay, I think it is. And I'm going to show you with the small amount of room I've got, and I'm going to have to get a scrap of paper to cover this work up and do number 13. So 1, 0, 1 dotted with 1, 2, negative 1 is equal to 1 plus 0 minus 1, which is 0, and a third of the way there. Then 1, 0, 1 dotted with 1, or no, no, negative 2, 2, 2 is going to be negative 2 plus 0 plus 2, also 0. Okay. Two out of three. Then the first and, th no, the second and third is going to be one, two, negative one, dotted with negative two, two, two. This is negative two, plus four is positive two, minus two, zero again. Okay. All of the vectors are mutually orthogonal to each other. They are a basis, so it's an orthogonal basis. It is not going to be an orthonormal basis, though, because none of these are unit vectors. Okay. They all need to be unit vectors in order to be orthonormal. So if it said Okay, but that's like is it an orthonormal basis? No. Uh, the length, for example, the length of T1, the first vector in the set, is equal to the square root of two. Okay, so what and then it says adjust the vector so they become an orthonormal basis. Well, I can do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take each vector and turn it into a, a unit vector by dividing by its length specifically. Okay, T1 has length squared of 2 because it's 1 squared plus 0 squared plus 1 squared is length squared. 
So I just divide everything by square root 2 to make sure it's a unit vector. Okay, then this one, I'll have 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared. That's going to be the length of square root of 6. And and then negative 2, 2, 2. Okay, 4, 8, 12, so the length is square root 12. And that's my orthonormal basis. Okay? You may be asked to do the Gram-Schmidt algorithm. Okay? This may have been at a point in my linear algebra course before I was asking people to do that on assessments. I was probably showing them how to do it once and, and moving on. Okay? But we are called to be better. Okay? And you are going to be called to do Gram-Schmidt on the test that's co coming up. Okay? So I think I've got one more problem set that I'm going to work through uh, before the end of this video. All right, so I'm going to do form A of the Gram-Schmidt quiz because that was the other problem set I had to work through. And I'm not going to do this three times. You don't need to see me do that. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to work through form A, and it, uh, I'll do Gram-Schmidt on this. This is a basis for the YZ plane, set of all points where x equals 0 in 3 space. And then, yeah, the first thing we're going to do is do Gram-Schmidt on it. But the good news is... It's not going to be bad because there's only two vectors, so there's only going to be two steps, right? And the first step is the easy step. Remember that in Gram-Schmidt, if basically I'm going to label this x1 and x2, that y1 is equal to x1, okay? And that's going to be 0, 1, negative 2. I could have chosen the other one to be x1, right? Because the order we put things in a set does not really matter. It's just that they're in the set. Okay, y1 equals x1. y2 is going to equal x2 minus the projection of x2 onto y1. Okay, we'll be able to do that. Okay, the projection of x2 onto y1 is going to be, let me grab that from. All right, yeah, I remember now. It's, remember, the projection of B onto A is just a scaled up or scaled down version of A. So, you know, vector A, and that's going to be scaled up or scaled down by the, basically, length of B times cosine of the angle between the vectors, which works out to be in that, okay, for reasons I showed you in class. So I'm going to not hide that formula. I'm going to instead copy down x2, so that's 0, 5, 5, minus... Okay, if I dot x2 and y1, I'll get 0 plus 5 minus 10 is negative 5. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to dot the thing I'm projecting onto with itself. So that'll be 0 times 0 plus 1 times 1 is 1, plus negative 2 times negative 2 is plus 4. So that's going to be 5. That's good. So I'm subtracting 1 of y1. Okay, so that's 0, 1, negative 2. No, I'm adding one. Oh, God, that almost tricked myself. Okay, and that's going to equal 0 plus 0. That's still going to be 0 because of the nature of the problem, right? It's yz plane. 5 plus 1 is 6, and 5 plus two, negative 2 is 3. Okay, so now my second basis, which is going to be an orthogonal but not an orthonormal basis. Yep, it is going to work. So it's going to be 0, 1, negative 2, and 0, 6, 3. And now we just need to make it an orthonormal basis by taking y1 and y2 and dividing by their lengths. The length of y1 is equal to the square root of 5. The length of y2 is going to be equal to 36, and 9 is the square root of 45. Now, a person could reduce that to, th I think, 3 root 5 if they really wanted to, and maybe that would help you, but I, it's not going to help me. So I'm going to just, you know, respectfully decline to do that, and I'm going to instead just divide by those lengths and put them in a basis and, and kind of call it a day. So, yeah, now the the orthonormal basis is going to be, man, I'll call that z1 and z2. Kind of keep with the terminology that we've been using before. 
Okay, so it's 0, 1, negative 2 divided by square root of 5. So 0, 1 over square root of 5, negative 2 over square root of 5. Over here for y2, I'm just dividing by the square root of 45. 0, 6 over root 45. And yeah, you could have said that was 2 over root 5 if you wanted, and it would make it a little more obvious, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. And then 3 over root 45. I shouldn't have put that right edge in until I put all of those radicals in. But that's all good. Okay, I found, I used the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization process to find an orthonormal basis for the YZ plane. That was number one. Number two is asking me to write a different normal, a uh, different basis, a different orthonormal basis for the YZ plane. Okay. Well, my second basis is just going to be J and K, right? 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, right? Because those vectors are linear independent. They span the YZ plane. They're length 1. That's what I was getting at. And I think y'all all eventually got there in class when you were working this problem. Okay, and then number three is a multiple choice question. I'm just going to say that without copying all this stuff, we can eliminate option B because it's got too many, uh, too many, too many vectors in it. If we row reduce the, if we row reduce the matrix that they give us, it says like here's a matrix. What's a an orthonormal basis for its range? If we row reduce the matrix, we see there's two pivots. Okay, we see that the pivots come in columns one and three, and so D looks like possibly an answer that's utilizing range trick one, right? Except D is neither orthogonal nor orthonormal. So it's just got to be, and E looks a whole lot like D, except uh, they're unit vectors. And I think, I mean, I think maybe C could be, C is an orthonormal basis for something, I think, but not the range of M. Okay, and I, I don't, I'm not going to go in and, and work the rest of that because it's been a long enough video and I've done a bunch of examples and I'm just telling you like what you've done so far, the discussions we've had in class has been enough and if there's anything else that you're unsure about as you prepare for the test, you're just going to contact me and I'll make sure that you have what you need. But thanks for watching.